Welcome back, everyone. We are continuing this morning to discuss the unfortunate and tragic death of Larry Kotler. The floods turned deadly on uh, Saturday night into Sunday morning as a man was swept away in the waters. Well-known radio personality Larry Kotler, 66 years old, loved by many in the community. He recently battled cancer. He leaves behind a wife and stepson. Police say Larry's van stalled at 50th and Tuana Drive in Des Moines. When he got out of the car, he was swept away. Several hours later, several blocks away, police found his body. And we are joined now by Lou Seifold and Larry Morgan, two incredible friends of Larry Kotler. First of all, both of you, I am so sorry for your loss. Thank you. Yeah, even a couple of days later, it seems uh, unreal uh, yeah. that this has happened. We, we heard that someone was swept away, and then we learned it was Larry and we really still can't uh, grasp mm, it. Not at all. Mm. As I got the email on Sunday morning, I just thought, no, that, that can't quite be true. Me too, me too. Larry, talk to us about how you want Larry Kotler to be remembered. Well, you know, first of all, there's been such a tremendous outpouring of uh, concern, sympathy. Larry would be shocked because he was very modest. <laughs> Larry would say, I didn't know I was that big a deal. But he was, and people loved Larry because Larry was so much a part of the fabric of this community. He uh, came to Des Moines, f went to Valley High School, uh, came I think in his junior high years and, and went to Valley and I mean, has been here more or less ever since. He's had some national mm -hmm. radio shows, but uh, Larry volunteered for everything. He never said no to speaking engagements. He was the voice of the Bulldogs and did the Hawkeye games for a while with Jim Zobel. So yeah, Larry's known by a lot of people. Larry, talk to me about what you do and how you became so close with him. We actually started together back at KSO Radio in 1979. Oh my goodness. Isn't that amazing? Yes. And, and Larry, tell him what he did. He was a part-time country music disc jockey. Oh, Larry, you're kidding. No. Larry Kotler is a country <laughs> DJ. How's Larry, that? who loved rock and roll music, but that's how he started in country. His passion was music, too, outside of sports. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I've done play-by-play -play over the years, as has Larry. And recently, I do Barnstormers on television and mm -hmm. Drake on television, and Larry did them on radio. So that's how we, I mean, we've known each other forever, forever for, for almost 40 years. Lou, talk to us about what you want people who uh, are remembering Larry in the future, what you want them to think about. The, the thing about Larry um, that you really have to, to put your uh, arms around is that this was probably the most positive person mm -hmm. we've ever met in our lives, regardless of the situation, regardless of what happened in his life, regardless of what curves he was thrown, he always found the positive in things. And I think if nothing else, Larry would want you to remember that at all times. No matter what life feeds you, make sure that you take it and make it a positive. He did that every single day of his life. And it's just, you know, it was an honor knowing him and being inspired by him and seeing him every day. Oh, absolutely. I used to joke with Larry that we would sit at a Drake shoot around prior to a game, and on paper there were games Drake had no chance of winning back the last <laughs> couple of years. And Larry would always come up with the way, well, if this happens and this happens and this happens, Drake could win. Now, unfortunately, more often than not, I was right. <laughs> but uh, Larry always thought there was a way. Larry's ties to Drake go back so deeply. When he moved here, his mom remarried his original, his birth father had died. And uh, Larry's stepfather, Bill Luffman, played football at Drake back in the 30s. So his tie to Drake really went back that far. I want to talk about his family, his wife and his stepson, who he leaves behind. Uh, talk to me about how you believe the community will wrap them up and support them. Well, if yesterday was any indication, um, uh, Jackie and I had a chance to go over and mm -hmm. to the home and visit with Deb for a little while. Uh, Deb and Zach were there. We saw them both. And the outpouring of support for the family right now is absolutely amazing. Larry, there had to be you know, 14, 15 cars right. parked around me, blocking the whole mm -hmm. street, and people inside there. There were a jump headed from the Barnstormers was there. Uh, other sportscasters were there helping out with the cleanup efforts. It was a nonstop you know, rotation of people coming and doing things. So uh, it was an amazing outpouring. But Deb just wants to make sure that everyone knows that uh, Larry appreciated all the love after all these years, and also she supports and appreciates the love that you're showing her right now Jenny, and her family. Thank you so much for being here. We you're really welcome. appreciate thank you, you for having joining me. in on the conversation and allowing Larry's legacy to live on. Plenty more ahead coming up after this short break, so stick with us.